Hi, I'm Kevin Tame, and welcome to The Hacktivist. Today I'm playing the Stinson CI deck that Jonah shared with me, and I'm playing against uh, Haley. Uh, this feels similar to like a Laguna Lock Haley, but it's using professional contacts instead. Uh, this is a pretty good matchup um, for for Haley. It's I think it's actually pretty evenly matched. Uh, it doesn't feel like I'm totally losing the game, but I feel like I can you know outplay these uh, my opponent here. So let's jump right into this match. So I see scarcity, and scarcity can pretty much lose the game for Haley. So I go ahead and I keep this hand, even though it doesn't have the best economy. Um, ice R&D because I don't want to get hit with indexing and just gain a credit and make sure that I'm on five. My opponent, since I have scarcity down, they are going to obviously run aggressively because they want to hit an agenda to clear the scarcity. My opponent top decks uh, corporate sales team, which is a bit of a pain. I wish I could have kept the scarcity down a little bit longer. Um, now what I need to do is either find another scarcity or, uh, you know, find a way to tax their credits. So I go ahead and I am going to start put you know start using MCA so that it will set me up for when I want to score the elective upgrades. And right here I just need to kind of gain money and um, it's it's a, this is a tough decision because you don't have a lot of money and you, you're not able to res a lot of things, but you kind of need to uh, to run. I mean to uh, uh, draw up to get the pieces that you need. Seeing this IPO was actually pretty good because now that I have the IPO, I'm able to kind of get above this eight credit threshold, which makes my job a lot easier. So I know I want to play IPO, so I draw. And here I see a scarcity, which is kind of a decision point for me. If I play the scarcity, I'm not at the eight credits that I need to play IPO. So it puts me at that weird threshold point where you want to be above eight. Um, but if I don't play scarcity, my opponents at this point, they have professional contacts where they're going to, they probably have some resources. So they want to draw up. So I opt for the IPO play, uh, install an IPO. Um, I think this might have been a mistake. I think getting the other scarcity down would have been ideal because then my opponent can't do what they do here where they, you know, they install turning wheel and that new ice, I can remember a new resource. I can't remember its name. That would have cost them four credits. And so I, I, I don't think it was ideal. Um, and they also have a indexing here. So I'm probably going to lose scarcity anyways. So it feels like just a turn too late to play the scarcity. Now my opponent doesn't come back into R&D, but they must not have seen an agenda. So my thought here is they're probably assuming that all the agendas are in HQ, which two of them are. So I'm going to go ahead and score the elective upgrade. Um, and then that sets me up. All I need to do is see Vitruvius doesn't score out. Haley typically runs clot. So I go ahead and I install an advanced Vance and then just you know see if they are going to use clot. I then go to four. And once again, wait to see if they're going to use clot. And I just go ahead and score it out. The game becomes much easier at this point. My opponent obviously thinking, since they didn't see anything on indexing, I must have all my cards in HQ. So this is a really great play on their part to do information sifting. Unfortunately, I actually don't have a lot. I only have one. So I give them a pile and they, go, they actually whiff on uh, the inf information sifting. So they probably think that I have, you know, a few other agendas in that other pile. Um, here, my opponent, I, it was a little bit of a misplay on their part. They installed the daily cast. I don't think they realized that they had to pay the, 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 um, what do you call it? The daily, the scarcity of resources tax. And unfortunately I didn't have a lot of things in archives, specifically like an ultraviolet clearance to fire with Stinson. So I just say and fired the IPO, which is good. It gives me, you know, 13 credits. So my opponent does see the corporate sales team clearing the, the scarcity. 
Here, um, I go for the MCA play, which I actually think is a misplay here. I think what I should have done is I should have gone with the reversed accounts play because if I was able to get reversed accounts down, then I'm able to really tax my opponent out. And now my opponent has shadow net down, has a lot of the key cards to, um, to be able to either information sift me or index me. Uh, MCA, I think was actually, it was just a, it was not a, not the right call. So my opponent goes ahead and plays stim hack to come in here. It's not really worth the cost to basically, uh, doesn't cost them really any extra money and cost me a lot more. So I'd rather just not res. Now I have seen this agenda and I will go ahead and score it out because if I can see a Vitruvius here quickly, I win the game, but my R and D is extremely weak. So if my opponent can come in and index me, I lose. So I really need to see a uh, Vitruvius here soon. I realized that I had, you know, had focused so much and kind of played a little lazily around this, I maybe should have drawn up aggressively. And so what I'm thinking now is I need to deal with this. I don't want uh, R and D um, to, to lose me the game. And so I go ahead and I decide to um, you know, try and switch up the ice and put the Ichi on the outside. I think what I should have done though was I should, I, once again, I, sh I, I wasn't, I was laser focused on the wrong thing. I was missing that reversed accounts was probably the better play here. Uh, if I can, if I had done that at like install advanced advance a turn earlier, um, my opponent might've come in to try and deal with it. And then I could res the ice and tax them out. Um, but now with five clicks, 25 credits, uh, it's hard for me to tax them out. So if they see two agendas or an elective upgrade, or if they have a mad dash in hand, I lose the game. Now this is a is a pretty taxing server right now for my opponent, um, but since it's end of the game, it doesn't matter. And so my opponent comes in, and and they see two agendas, and they, since they have the turning wheel, they're able to uh, you know steal two agendas. Uh, I think uh, I think I misplayed that, and I didn't. What you really want to be doing in these decks is you want to make the economic advantage extremely in your favor. You want to be putting them down below five credits every time if you can. Now my opponent does have shadow net and so they can recover pretty quickly, but they only had one fan site and I wasn't going to score any more agendas without winning the game. So they weren't gonna have any more fan sites. So they're gonna have to start sacrificing real, real agendas. The play should have been to continue to re reverse to counts them so that they have no money so that my opponent can't get into this server because this server was taxing. They have one credit left and they had 25 credits. So this was, was taxing enough where they wouldn't have been able to do what they did there at the end if I had uh, denied them the money. Well, thanks so much for watching this match. Um, Haley and CI is a, a, a great matchup right now. Uh, it's exciting and fun. Um, if you have any questions or comments about the, the way I played, uh, I, I obviously saw some of my mistakes, but if you see any more, please let me know. And uh, I hope you enjoy this video. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.